Senator Loring, everyone in this election cycle keeps talking about immigrants and specifically the DACA students. Uh -huh. But nobody's really discussing what we're going to do with the 11 to 35, the estimates for undocumented immigrants is so large. What are we going to do about those who don't qualify for DACA or similar programs under TPS or anything in similarities? Well, we need an immigration plan that helps the people who are here already. Uh, we start with the dreamers in many of our conversations, but it's important to remember our basic values. And that is we don't break up families. And people who are here should have a path to citizenship. That's part of what we need to do going forward. We also need to revise our temporary protective status for people. People who've been here, who've built businesses here, who are contributing, and who uh, can't be sent or shouldn't be sent uh, back to their home countries. We need a lot of change in our immigration system. And as you know, we had a comprehensive immigration plan that passed the Senate back in 2013. It didn't have everything I wanted, but it had a lot of good parts, including pathway to citizenship. Um, but the Republicans blocked it in the House, and that was the end of it. I think the main thing right now is we can't give up. We have to be willing to get back in this fight and do what's right for all of our families. Immigration does not make us weaker as a country. It makes us stronger here in Charleston. I hope you all are having some fun while you're here. I understand that everybody except me got to go eat ice cream already. Is that right? I haven't had any ice cream. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway, anyone has any questions? Yes. So it's way too early to talk about polls. What are we, eight months away from the first caucuses and uh, primary elections? I'm out there doing what I believe in. Um, I get a chance to talk about what's broken in America, how we can fix it, and to build a grassroots movement to get that done. And I get to do it every day. I've done 90 plus town halls. Uh, I've taken more than 2,000 unfiltered questions. Um, I've been to 20 states and Puerto Rico. Uh, I think we're closing in on 30,000, 35,000, 30,000 uh, selfies. Um, but it's been a chance to meet people face to face, to meet them where they are, and to hear what's in their hearts and to talk to them about what's in mine. And to build the optimism we need for how we're going to fight the fight and build the kind of America of our best values. And I think we're on that path. President Trump says that uh, he is willing to expect to take your advice on the candidate. Uh, surprise, surprise. Against you. Are, are you prepared for that? You know, look, Donald Trump is going to do whatever he thinks helps Donald Trump. I think the way that we win is to go out and talk to people all across this country about our plans for the future, about our vision, about what we're really willing to get in here and fight for. I think that's going to be the big difference. Senator, you what are your biggest takeaway from meeting voters in South Carolina? Um, how deeply worried people are about their children, about how they build a future for their children. Often it's talked about in education terms, sometimes in healthcare terms, sometimes it's just the basic infrastructure of the region, um, access to rural broadband. But the question about how do our children get a chance in a world that just keeps working better and better and better for a thinner and thinner slice at the top. One of the reasons I'm out there talking about specific plans, here's how we can do this, is to show people it's not hopeless. What it's going to take is for us to be in the fight. I get that. Nobody's going to give up power who's got it. It's not going to be easy. But if we get in that fight, we can make real change. And that change will touch the lives of our children and give them real opportunities. 
Center for the World Peace. Do you have a sense of how you're going to be able to do this upcoming debate? You know, um, I'm going to figure out what it's like to only be able to talk for 60 seconds and then you got to quit. Uh, and what it's like with so many people on stage. I'm not quite sure how to prepare for that, but I think those are two things to think about. Other than that, I'll be talking about the things I've been talking about all along. The, what drew me into this race, a country that works great for those at the top and not for anyone else, and what we can do about that, what we can do together. Senator Warren, everyone in this election cycle keeps talking about immigrants and specifically the DACA students. Uh -huh. But nobody's really discussing what we're going to do with the 11 to 35, the estimates for undocumented immigrants is so large. What are we going to do about those who don't qualify for DACA or similar programs under TPS or anything in similarities? Well, we need an immigration plan that helps the people who are here already. Uh, we start with the dreamers in many of our conversations, but it's important to remember our basic values. And that is we don't break up families. And People who are here should have a path to citizenship. That's part of what we need to do going forward. We also need to revise our temporary protective status for people. People who've been here, who've built businesses here, who are contributing, and who uh, can't be sent or shouldn't be sent uh, back to their home countries. We need a lot of change in our immigration system. And as you know, we had a comprehensive immigration plan that passed the Senate back in 2013. It didn't have everything I wanted, but it had a lot of good parts, including pathway to citizenship. Um, but the Republicans blocked it in the House, and that was the end of it. I think the main thing right now is we can't give up. We have to be willing to get back in this fight and do what's right for all of our families. Immigration does not make us weaker as a country. It makes us stronger. Yeah, so one, 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 one of the main concerns right now, you're at the Black Economic Alliance Forum, and one of the main issues in black economic uh, development is the employment prospects of formerly incarcerated yes. people. How do we respond to that? So I have, uh, I was one of the original people trying to get um, uh, the box eliminated that has people check their uh, incarceration status or their former incarceration status, so that it's not held against anyone who's trying to get a job. And I think it's a good start, but I don't think it's nearly enough. I think of it this way. When we talk about criminal justice reform, we need to talk about it from the beginning to the end. And that's everything from what we make unlawful in this country and what kind of sentencing we put in place. A uh, quick example is uh, uh, marijuana. Uh, blacks and whites, uh, according to most studies, use marijuana at about the same rates, but African Americans are more than twice as likely to be arrested for use than whites. Well, one way we can deal with that one is it's time to just take the marijuana laws off the books and legalize marijuana. Let, let this change. But that works its way all the way through the system. And the question about helping people who've been incarcerated reintegrate to society so they can support themselves and support their families is about access to jobs, it's about access to housing, it's about access to their own families. And we need to push forward on all of those fronts. We need to make real investments so people have opportunities to take care of themselves. It's good for them, it's good for the communities they live in, and it's good for all. That's the kind of policy we need. Okay, thank you everybody. We have a place for Thank you. Uh, we have